This is the Weekly Set, an official podcast of thetotalscreen.com. I wish I was the monster you think I am. You have come here to beseech me. Madness can be a medicine for the modern world. Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Weekly Set. This is episode 255 of The Weekly Set Podcast, the official podcast of the Total Screen. I am your host. My name is Tyson, and joining me today, as always, is my partner in crime here at the Total Screen, William Rowe. Hello. So today we're going to be talking about Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. Uh, we're going to be talking specifically about the interactive special, uh, Kimmy versus the Reverend, that just hit Netflix last week. So we're going to be kind of going over that. I, don't, I doubt we've seen every possible uh, <laughs> every possible path in it, but between the two of us, we've we've spent you know quite a bit of time going through it. So we've we've kind of covered a lot of the the bigger moments, and uh, yeah, so we're going to be discussing that. So first things first, we did Bandersnatch, which was the Black Mirror one, and now we've done the Kimmy Schmidt one. Which one do you think worked better? Uh, jeez, that's a loaded question. I would say that they're different. Okay, uh, I would I would say to me. Bandersnatch had more branching paths and like yeah. small decisions. Uh, yeah, a lot more nuance in Bandersnatch and like some of the choices you make. Yeah, a lot more nuance uh, and and what and basically with Kimmy Schmidt, it's more it's more straightforward. So it's like there is a lot more of just like two two choice like in scenarios in Kimmy Schmidt. There's like some that's three. There's like w- at least one that has four different choices. But there's not like a lot of like branching. I've only like found two branching paths and I went through this twice, uh, picking different options every time. So like, it's not like I did, I, so, you know, it's, I did spend some time with this and I only found like two parts where like the storyline like kind of branches off. And most yeah, of the choices, if you make the the wrong choice, you just get a bad end, like, right away. Yeah, with most of them, you get a bad ending, right? There is at least one choice you can make, uh, which doesn't result in a bad ending until until towards the end of the entire thing. So you go through, like, you can make you can make a choice early on, and the story will continue on like normal until you get close to the end. Then when you get to the end, like, Kimmy won't know what she's supposed to do, and it will result in a bad ending. And, like, they will literally tell you, like, Mikey will come on and said, oh, you didn't do this thing at the beginning, and that's why. And he's like, but don't worry, we're not going to send you all the way back to the beginning. We're going to send you to, like, this part closer to where you were so that and give you an opportunity to fix it there. And <laughs> oh yeah, that was that was from Kimmy not reading the book, right? Yeah, yeah, that's from Kimmy not reading. Yeah, at the beginning when she meets uh, Daniel Radcliffe's character for the first time. Uh, well, she's not meeting him for the first time, but we, when the audience meets him for the first time, uh, you know, and you get the choice to either have Kimmy read the book, play in the wedding, or do a makeout session. I never chose do a makeout session. I don't know what happens with that. But I had her the first time. I had to read the book, and so I didn't have that problem. But the second time, I decided to try and see what happens if she just plans a wedding and then that's when it it comes up it, it's so subtle too because it doesn't like it's one of the few things where it doesn't immediately let you know you did something wrong because yeah, the story yeah. just continues and then when she gets that part you you kind of realize that oh yeah it's kind of important that she reads the book <laughs> so she knows the whole lemon juice trick yeah so she knows the lemon juice trick yeah yeah um yeah, I was, I was trying to figure out which, which part you were talking about. And then when you mentioned the, like at a certain point, I realized, oh, he's talking about, yeah, yeah, that one, the one choice where if you didn't read the book, it wouldn't work out. But man, there's, there's some really funny bad ends, but like but with Banner Snatch, like there were a lot of branching paths, you know? And then those branching paths would have like tons of variable yeah, paths. Yeah, they would as have well. their own branching. But this one is a lot more simple in its structure. So, you know, that's why I said I could go through it twice and, 
feel like I've seen most like Vandersnatch. I still don't, you know, I didn't go through that again. I still don't feel like I've seen like everything there is to see with Vandersnatch. I feel like that is incredibly dense and it would take you like a long time to see everything that that particular program has to offer. People Whereas, shit on that one a lot. Yeah, and I think yeah. like that, that was really ambitious, Vandersnatch. Yeah, it like it was really complex. And like I can understand some of the people shitting on it and stuff. Some of that just comes down to the nature of interactivity, you know? You can't have like a really solid solid story that's properly foreshadowed and everything when it's interactive no, because you lose you lose the the director's vision and i think i think this is why this one is a lot more simple because there is a set story in this there is a this it is like a normal episode of kimmy schmidt where there is a set story um that you go through and you notice like a lot of the decisions are simple decisions that abruptly end in a bad ending because like because it doesn't deviate from the story that they they set up. Yeah, like waiting for the Uber. Yeah. You know, so, or the so. the one where you choose Jacqueline to the Titus. Yeah, the one where you choose Jacqueline instead of the Titus. That one was hilarious. <laughs> Because she has, like, Buck- Buckley flying her private jet. <laughs> and, he, and, and, she, and she's like, no, we, I had to say that to get him into to college. <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then he's like, and then Jacqueline's like, Buckley, you didn't take the you didn't take those classes I sent you to? And he goes, no, I don't want to be a pilot. I want to be an influencer. And she goes, <laughs> she goes, you can't be an influencer after you got banned from YouTube for Nazi stuff. <laughs> 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 yeah there's all sorts of like little jokes in there I, I love the one where um where when kimmy's friend or whatever and she talks about like like oh like i'm part of the group like i can be part of it she's like i've never been part of the group well i was in the writer's room on the last season wait, of wait, game wait, of thrones wait. no 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 you no, that's not the setup the setup for that is the setup for that is after you get or maybe, or maybe, or maybe you saw something different than I did. But the setup for that is after one of the bad endings happens. It involves Titus, but I'll, I want to get into that later. But after one of the bad endings happens, like Kimmy's friend, what was her name? It was Cindy, right? Yeah, Cindy. Yeah, K- Kimmy's friend Cindy is like after you get one of the bad endings, she comes up on the screen and she goes, "I don't, I don't think that, I don't think it was supposed, I don't think it was supposed to end like that." But what do I know? I'm not a writer. But what do I know? I'm not a writer. Writer, but I was I was on the staff of the last season of Game of Thrones. They did all my ideas. Yeah, <laughs> yeah maybe you're right. I'm a, I'm a little mixed up on my memories on this, but uh, I do remember <laughs> that joke being really funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There was also there was also a quick throwaway reference to some behind the scenes drama that was happening because of Vandersnatch with the whole choose your own adventure thing. Uh-huh. You hear about that? How they used the term choose your own adventure, and then that term was copyrighted. Oh, yeah, I remember they tried to sue Black Mirror because like, so the, the so they had all these adventure. different names for like for like that kind of book. They're oh, like yeah. it's a it's a pathfinding story or something like. I think yeah, I think she was like it's a pathfinding story. Then Daniel Radcliffe said something like, oh, in England. And we call them, you know, and he had his own name for them. He says, in England, we call them this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it was like a little meta joke. That was pretty funny. Yeah, that was pretty funny. Uh, like I said, okay, so the best endings, in my opinion, happen with Titus. So Titus, we all know Titus. We all know he's prone to making bad decisions. And this interactive story lets you enable Titus like like nobody's business. And enabling him is bad because he makes... <laughs> sleeping instead of working out. <laughs> yeah, sleeping instead of working out. One of the best ones is like when they get into that bar, that redneck bar, and then oh yeah, Freebird. They, <laughs> they start playing Freebird, and and Tyson's like, I know, and Titus is like, I know this, and then it comes up like you get a choice, like he knows this or he thinks he knows this, and if, <laughs> and if you pick, he thinks he knows this. He starts like singing some like ridiculous song, <laughs> he, like like he starts singing like some ridiculous song, and it pisses everybody off, and it causes a riot that leads in him and Kimmy's deaths. <laughs> Honestly, I think the best bad end. I don't because, know if you got because, this. Because it shows like uh, the nine, it shows like the news and like it's an emergent, they're, they're replaying like the 911 call. And, and <laughs> Someone's stuff. disrespecting Skinner. <laughs> yeah, somebody's disrespecting Skinner. <laughs> 
Yeah, I, I think the best bad end wasn't, and it w- didn't happen directly. It's like you can get basically most of the good end except one detail, yeah. and um, and that's the where where Jacqueline ends me too. Oh, oh my God, yes. Yeah, Jack, and Jack, and like all the men just start stripping off and like grabbing on all the girls as like boobs in California starts playing. Oh my god, I died. That is another one that results from having Titus make a bad decision because there's a decision near the end. Kimmy is running after the Reverend and Titus is running after her and he sees like and Titus sees like another buffet and he's like, No, that's just the drugs. Oh, and that's it, not how I got it. That that's Oh, really? Because that's how I got it because, because I got it from Jacqueline's choice cuz Jacqueline Actually, no, that is kind of Yeah, that is right. It is hit him because it is, you make a yeah. choice as Jacqueline, she's about to lie or reveal that she lied. She's about and, to reveal that she lied. So, you have Titus there and he's looking at the buffet and a choice pops up and it says it says chase after Kimmy or stay in or stay and eat the buffet. And at first like you don't think it's related because yeah. Yeah, so that's right. The first time I had Titus stay and eat the buffet, and then and then Jacqueline had to reveal that she lied, and 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 she ended me too. And it, yeah, yeah that, <laughs> like, but you're a woman, and we're supposed to believe women. Yeah, you, wait, you lied, but you're a woman, and we're supposed to believe women. <laughs> Time's up right now <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then they, they all start just like all the men start like instantly like start harassing all the women there <laughs> they yeah they start like stripping off their clothes and like grabbing start, onto them and like and grabbing onto them <laughs> yeah. and, then, and the women are just looking at jackie like you ended it <laughs> how could you yeah, I I thought that was I thought that was related to the choice I made with Jacqueline, but then when I went through it the second time and I had and and I select and I had Titus ignore the buffet and run after Kimmy. When Titus runs after Kimmy, it turns out that Titus is actually like they're actually where they're filming, and so <laughs> Titus like so so one of the like the the assistants like finds Titus and tells him that he's ready that he's needed on the set and he leads and he and right before like Jacqueline's about to reveal that she lied she it comes over like their earpiece that they found titus and he's coming to set and so jacqueline doesn't reveal that she lied and that doesn't happen yeah so it's the it's the tightest choice that causes so like i said the tightest choices are ones that end in the most hilarious consequences that's that's right (laughs) yeah Um, there's a there's a bit in there i loved as well where um they you come to like a fork in a road and and i think it's titus like looks directly at the camera and goes why don't you help us decide and but then there's never a choice yeah yeah i I thought that was hilarious it's like the one time there's like no choice is like set up like you're supposed to make a choice it's set up to where it's it's like an obvious choice right because you thought like you're supposed to select where they go but there's never a choice there (laughs) and dice goes maybe you can help us while you at the camera then kimmy goes who are you what are you talking about and then titus goes it's it's the drugs (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it was pretty funny. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> because Titus because Titus takes shrooms like earlier. Be- because er- because earlier what happens is they come across like this guy it, it, doing a music like, festival. Doing like this music festival that's like only him and he did it with his like dad's money. And he's like, he's in, in his pitch in his, he does a sales pitch and a sales pitch was like, you heard of the fire festival, right? You heard of the fire festival and their pamphlet said that they had, that you could swim with pigs. But when you got there, there was no pigs. And he said, well, we have pit, we have a pig. And he, <laughs> he goes to like this, this like, like little kid swimming pool with like a pig in it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> did you get different drug effects on that guy like both times i, got, I, I saw that guy i got different uh, yes. he was on different drugs like the first time he was on bath salts and yeah, he tried to like time, eat, eat titus's yeah. face yeah he, he said he's he said oh but first i gotta eat your face because I, I gotta eat your face so he's like bath salts that's what i'm on because, yeah. and the second <laughs> and time he was on like ecstasy yeah the second time he was on ecstasy and he tried to have like a three-way <laughs> Yeah, we were talking off uh, before the podcast about 
how there's like these weird like moments where there'll be like a scene and sometimes there's a character in it and sometimes there isn't. And sometimes the one I brought up was uh there was at like, the bachelorette party yeah. and, and Amy Sedaris's character like popped up and she well, wasn't in it before. It was like well, what? what? Well what you said like what you said like with with like the uh with the with the music festival drug guy. Like that's an example because that is not related to a choice. There's no choice involved when he Or it's an earlier there. choice and you just don't Yeah, there's there's, there's you don't no know that it there, affects it. There's no choice involved when he appears, and they run into him anyway. But it's like, yeah, he's on different drugs depending on choices he made earlier. Yeah, so yeah, it's, yeah. It's interesting how like. So choices like change like even like random scenes that you wouldn't expect to be different. Like I remember two bad ends in which like it ends with, with it showing like Kimmy like uh, or, or it shows. Uh, Daniel Radcliffe's character, like after he'd already gotten married, the first yes. time it was Kimmy had blown herself up and the Reverend, well, she, yeah, she and he made a clone Reverend. of her. Did you did you did you kill the Reverend th- all the different ways three times? Yeah, in hell? and then you see him okay. in hell with yeah, the puppet. Because, yeah, it's funny because yeah, if if you kill the Reverend like all the different ways you can before like sparing him, like like it just shows him in hell, and he says he says, "Wow, I can't believe you killed me three different times." You know. Yeah, I can't believe you killed me three times in a row. And it's like, and it's like, well, jokes on you because I'm in heaven. <laughs> but you see, like the fire flames behind him and stuff, and then and then you see like the rape puppet is there, and he's got no <laughs> pants, so like his dick is out. <laughs> And the rape puppet is just like, no, we're in hell. And he's like, if we're in hell, then how come this dope ass song has been playing for like, for like over, for like days straight? And it's like, it, <laughs> it's, I just want to fly. Yeah. <laughs> By that one they should have made it the uh, Cars for Kids song. They should have made it the car. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> I just thought I just thought it was like hilarious. Like Sugar Ray is what's playing in hell, and the <laughs> like on loop, like, yeah, on loop. And the Reverend thinks it's like a dope ass song, <laughs> <laughs> and then he's just, and he's just like, and, and and he's just like berating you for killing him like three times. He's like, yeah, I know, that was dumb. You gotta go back and fix that. And then he's like, give me a drink. And the puppet is like, okay. And the puppet like pisses into his glass. <laughs> <laughs> then I got another, there was another bad end, end where, uh, where Daniel Radcliffe's character ended up marrying Jacqueline's stepdaughter. Yes. Xanthope. <laughs> well, 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 the one, the bad ending that happens after Kimmy blows herself up and the Reverend is it shows Daniel Radcliffe and he's married to like this. Kimmy's this clone, clone, yeah. Kimmy's clone who is like, doesn't have all her mental faculties. <laughs> just lost out sex. Yeah, it's just she's, she's very sex. rapey. And, yeah. <laughs> she's like sex now, and he's like, okay, but be gentle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But then there's another time where he ended up marrying Xanthope, yeah, and yeah, but, but, um, yeah. and like the whole royal family died, and she's like queen of England now. <laughs> yeah, she's like, queen of England now. That was very funny. I like seeing Jack McBrayer in this. Did, yes. did you ever watch 30 Rock? Yes. I've, I've seen some of 30 Rock. Jack McBrayer is hilarious. He's the prison guard. There is a scene. It's not an ending because it continues, but there is a scene where, like, Kimmy is, like, speculating on how the Reverend escaped. And you can actually, like, even though this is, like, supposedly Kimmy's speculation, you could decide, like, how he escapes, either by being sneaky or by, if you choose karate, uh, Jack McBrayer ends up dying. <laughs> yeah. Like because like he like pulls out a gun and the Reverend like kicks his gun and the bullet shoots out of it and goes ricocheting around like the room until like it hits Jack McBrayer in the like the neck and he falls down and then the Reverend runds away. Or you do the like, mind games option and I can't remember everything that happened, but I remember the thing that made me crack up was that um the Reverend just ducked under the table for the everything. It was just yeah, open. Yeah. yeah, it was just there was open. No wall was... Underneath. <laughs> yeah, that that was the option that that was a uh, that was the play that was like the plan of sneak escape option and the sneaky Which is, escape it, was just, just crawl under there and yeah it's just wide open he could just crawl under there and escape there and used to be it. this there used to be this sketch comedy show on MTV like way back in the 90s called uh, The State yeah and one of the skits that was so hilarious was like it was like a very like 
like Shawshank Redemption kind of thing with this guy in this prison. And the, the, the warden's like talking to the guy in the prison. He's like, there's only two ways out of this prison, in a body bag or through that wide open gate over there. And the whole thing, like, the guy just, like, eventually, like, he's, like, in prison for a little bit, and then he just, like, walks out of the open gate, like, with no n- no problem at all. But then he's, like, haunted about the fact that he, like, left up the wide open gate. But it just made me think of that with the whole, like, <laughs> he just, like, walked under, went under the table. Just, <laughs> there's no wall there. Just, just w- w- went right out there and just left. And then Jack McBrayer even, like, saw him again or something, and he was like, oh, I like your outfit or something. <laughs> I like your jumpsuit. Yeah. He's like, well, I'm done visiting. I'll see you next time. And Jack McBrayer's like, oh, bye. And then he's like, oh, I like your, I like your jumpsuit. And he's like, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this one, I honestly, I thought I'd like this one a lot more than Bandersnatch because I thought comedy kind of suited this kind of thing more. And this is really funny, but I think the fact that the past d- didn't truly branch it made it like so that you ended up re- to to get more of the past. You just had to kind of repeat the scenes as is a lot of times, and it kind of took a little bit out of it for me. So, like I was asking you at the beginning, which you liked more, and and I think because of the ambition, I think I still like Bandersnatch more than this. Mm-hmm. And I think that it's just this one is really funny, but like you, you hear that you know if you have to do the past multiple times, or you get like a lot of the quick repeats where it just rhymes a little bit. Like, I've, I did the thing twice, and I probably have seen most of the good jokes, like, six times. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I feel like I you do it twice, and you see most of the things, especially since I think I got, like, the best ending. Because the, yeah. the first time I got, like, the good ending, where she gets married, she was in, like, the fun dress, and, like, but then, like, Jack, Jacqueline had ended Me Too, and T- Titus uh, didn't get the part in the movie so like even like and and it's funny because when i got that ending like uh like i think jacqueline popped up and she said something like she said something like well congratulations you got kimmy to her wedding kimmy's happy but it could have ended better for me and titus you know i mean i mean it's good that kimmy's happy but she's always happy you know <laughs> <laughs> she's always happy how about you try a little harder to make better decisions for us next time? Yeah. <laughs> and so, and yeah. so like the, and so like the second time through, I didn't, I didn't get the, you know, I didn't get Jacqueline ending me too. And I did get Titus to the set to film his like movie scene. So like the second time I got Kimmy to her wedding and I didn't get like, uh, I didn't get Jacqueline or anybody like telling me that I could have done better. Better. It just like ended. Yeah, like I didn't get anything telling me I could do it better, but I did get like a rewatch button or something that popped up. Yeah, at the you end. Get rewatch. So I'm not you... sure if there's another because I know in Bandersnatch there was one ending that just straight straight up took you out of it. I'm going to. Oh yeah, there was. Yeah, there one ending that just straight up ends the entire program. Yeah, because yeah. It, it. Yeah, because it straight up stopped and it moved on to like tried to move you on to the next episode of Black Mirror. Yeah, and that yeah. was like the only ending that did that. I don't know if that exists for Kimmy Smith if they just changed it so that you always get that retry button or what but I feel like the ending I got was probably the best. The only thing that happened in the second ending was like Kimmy made an offhand comment like I think I should have chose the silly dress but other than that like I thought eh I mean The first time I chose the fun dress and the second time I chose the classier traditional dress. Or yeah, I cho- the second time I chose a classier dress, so at the end of her wedding, she says something like, I should have chose the fun dress. Yeah, that's kind of like the only difference, I guess. Like, So maybe there is like a more true ending if you do that. So maybe I have to choose the fun dress to get the true ending. I'll probably wait a while and then try it again, because I don't, like, like I said, I've seen most of the big jokes like six times, because unlike Bandersnatch, it, it really, there aren't a lot of branching paths. Like Bandersnatch, you can go down a path and it's yeah yeah like i said there's there i only found like two branching paths there's the one with jacqueline where where like it starts out with you know titus is you could have her say titus is unhappy with the script or unhappy with the wardrobe if titus if you say titus is unhappy with the script then they get the writer and jacqueline has to deal with the writer and then you get different choices with him like like freak out on him or go to your happy or have jacqueline go to her happy place but if you say with the wardrobe, then you get the wardrobe assistant instead of the writer, and you get different choices with her, like uh, play mind games on her, or like 
physical violence. <laughs> did you choose? I chose physical violence. I never got to do the mind games one with her. I did the mind games. What did she do with the mind games? The physical violence is that she just like forced, like, like took the thing away from her. She didn't like attack her really or anything. She she does mind games on this poor woman, right? And she gets her to the point where like she's basically in tears. And then you get a choice to like to listen. She she says like you don't know the kind of year I had. And then it leads that leads to like a third decision branch. I got that like, same pattern even with the violence. Oh, okay, because that led to, like, a third decision branch where, like, Jacqueline could be like, I don't care, or she could, like, or you could ask her about her year, in which I chose ask her about her year. Yeah, I did, too, on that one. So I didn't get to see the other path on that one. Because the other get, time I, I was dealing with the writer instead of the wardrobe. I didn't get the third, I did get a third decision path with the writer, though. There always seemed to be, like, two with the writer. But there's yeah, I only did one path with the writer. Yeah. But it's that's that's one of the, like the branching paths, and I'm kind of blinking on the other one. But I know there's at least the second one. I can't remember. Oh, you know, what? I think it was with Titus. It might not have been like a true branching path because it was like tight. You could either have Titus go to the gym or you could have him go to sleep. But then when he's like sleeping, you can you can choose to wake him up or choose to let him sleep. I never hmm. chose to completely let him sleep, so I'm not sure what that would have led to. Probably something <laughs> bad. Probably like an instanding. Let's just talk about, we've kind of gone through like the majority of the thing. Let's talk about some of just our kind of favorite random little moments here and there throughout it or things like I'll, I'll go first. They go to for her bachelorette party where it's Daniel Radcliffe instead of her. They go to a, a Korean karaoke bar, but it's a it's North a, Korean karaoke yeah. bar. And there's a portrait of Kim Jong-un in the background. There's a portrait of Kim Jong-un and there's like this old guy singing karaoke and like the lyrics are like, oh dear leader. <laughs> So that was really funny. That was really funny. Just in a uh, booth and there's a Kim Jong-un in the background. It's like, what the fuck? Yeah, <laughs> there's a Kim Jong-un in the background. <laughs> Uh, there's like this one point where they're in like the bar and like and like and like uh they get like uh the information from that one guy like she she gives like this she pulls out this watch this Hello Kitty watch and she's like I got this watch from Hello Kitty herself you know it's covered <laughs> in diamonds and she gives it this like this old guy comes up and he goes yeah you he goes you give that to me I need the money for opioids it's an <laughs> epidemic don't you know <laughs> yeah and then he's he's like he's like you can take my car he's like he's all it's not fast but it'll get you where you need to go or something and then you it, when you when they leave you see like a truck driving and then it like once it goes past then you see like it's like a riding lawnmower <laughs> yeah you see it's a riding lawnmower oh oh my god the one thing i did talk about was the one choice early on where like uh kimmy's trying to figure out what uh, who the book belongs to, and Daniel Radcliffe suggests she call, like, her old bunkmates, because it probably belonged to one of them, and you get the yeah, choice yeah. of who to call. If and you call, Cindy's like, the only one that, that continues the story. The other two ones, like, dead end it. Well, not exactly. Like, Gretchen, Gretchen doesn't end the story, so, like, Gretchen doesn't, like, she, like, Gretchen's is, like, she's robbing a bank. It's really funny, because, she, like, she's in the middle of, like, robbing a bank, and she has, like, this Hillary mask, and she goes, okay, okay, you know, like, we're, we're like the feminist, like, robbers or something. And she's like, and she's like, put all your money in the bag. And we're also going to talk about our feelings. I'm feeling, <laughs> and she's like, I, I'm feeling nervous, but also like really excited right now. And she goes up to one of the tellers and she's like, put all the money in the bag. And you're going to want to see it. You're going to want to talk to a therapist after this. This was a really traumatic experience for you. <laughs> <laughs> But if you or like to- Donna basically convinces her. If she, you talk to Donna, she convinces her to just like move on with the wedding and don't let the pastor interfere and it just dead ends. Yeah, yeah. Donna Maria. If you choose Donna Maria, that leads to an ending where she just like moves on with the wedding and then it shows like her married to Daniel Radcliffe two years later and she's talking about how happy she was and she's like, yeah, but we never got to find out what happened with Titus's movie. Oh, and Cindy comes out and she says, you know, like, you, ne- you didn't get to see much of me, you know, and we flew Daniel Radcliffe out, out all this <laughs> way for one scene and, like, Daniel Radcliffe goes, who? <laughs> <laughs> 
Kimmy was like, what are you talking about? And Kimmy goes, you know, yeah, you know, and, and we didn't really find out what happened with Titus and his movie. It wasn't much of an adventure, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't much of an adventure, yeah. <laughs> we mentioned the one where you you can, uh, where they all basically die in like the yeah. plane crash and stuff. And, and uh, if, if you do that one, like uh, uh, Fred Armisen comes out as Robert Durst. And he's yeah, like, well, he- you killed them all. Congratulations or something. <laughs> yeah, well, you killed them all. Congratulations. Who 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 knew who knew having Jacqueline come instead of Titus would lead to Jacqueline getting everybody killed? I guess I should know, and it's Jacqueline. But <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> There's also the funny bit about like um you basically like uh, um Cindy and uh uh I'm blanking on her name right now. Lillian are trying to test Daniel Radcliffe to see if he'll be faithful yes. at that North Korean bar or whatever. If you choose like Cindy, he gets kind of like he's kind of put off by her and kind of goes away. Um, oh my god! But she, if you she, choose, she starts. She says, "I'm going to do like tongue things. When, I'm going to stick out my tongue a lot when I, when I'm doing my song because that's sexy." And she starts doing it, and it's ridiculous. And she's like flipping her tongue out, and like, "Oh my god! It look it's it's horrible." <laughs> <laughs> she she scares him off, but Lillian yeah. she he ends up like making out with her, and then yeah. e- even on the path where you have him getting scared off by Cindy, like you know Lillian ends up going to him to say like it's okay, you passed the test, you're just checking you, and he ends up making out with her anyways. Yeah, and so I like the little twist they had of like of him like having a nanny that's basically exactly like Lillian. It's the same yeah, actress. A, basically like a twin of Lillian. <laughs> yeah. But they make like a whole like a Mary Poppins like reference with her. Yeah, yeah. Well, she she's, it's funny. Yeah, but you get another choice when she shows up because Lillian says like, we find out that he has like no life experience. And so Lillian's uh-huh. like, oh, we gotta, we gotta teach you about the world, you know? And and then he's like, yeah, but my nan can teach me. And then you get a choice where, like, either go with Lillian or go with his nan. And, like, yeah. neither of these choices are consequential to anything. It, they they both end up in the same place, basically. Uh, so it's not like this isn't, like, an end. This doesn't result in ending. This doesn't result in a story stopper or anything. So The main path is Lillian's. So you actually kind of see that. Yeah. If you pick the nan yeah. one, you only see, like, about half of it. And then it just cuts yeah. to him afterwards talking about it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you just but by funny because if you pick the nan one, like she talks about like Mary Poppins and she says, Oh, it's normal for like a nanny's charge to like get to develop a crush on his na- on his nanny, that's fine. You know, but Mary Poppins took advantage of that. She shagged her kids. <laughs> <laughs> but then they go out the window together and then like later on he's talking about how he just saw like all these horrible things in the city and yeah, yeah. <laughs> made him value like Kimmy even more. But like if you do Lily and Lily and just runs through like all the different types of girlfriends like crazy girlfriends he could have like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is funny too <laughs> they're yeah they're both funny if you but yeah it's 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 clear to me like lillian is like the canon path but yeah that's funny that yeah that's that's one of the time where like the choice isn't really that consequential to anything because most of the other choices are consequential in one way or another yeah what, it's yeah. you end up in the same path no matter where you go yeah so, like the thing is in banner snap that would like deviate paths and then those paths would deviate again and Kimmy Schmidt most of the paths either they end they, they have a bad end or they're inconsequential like it, it's like you'll see a different joke basically yeah you'll, but then yeah. you get to the same place yeah then you get to the same place exactly exactly there's no real way to change the plot you either change the plot by ending the story prematurely or you don't one of the best bad ends you can get involves Johnny Knoxville. Yes. So they go they go into his uh his place and it's it's you have that path regardless. Like if you make it into the story, you're gonna end up in this path. But there's two choices you can make, and one has a bad path and one can be a bad path or a good path based on a different decision you make at a different point. But Basically, you go into this this place. He's like crazy. He puts a gun right on him right away, and they're like, "He's like, are you here to rob me or buy?" And they're like, are "Buy." Sh- and he's like, "Oh, a- that's refreshing." He's like, he's like shopping or robbing, and they're like, yeah. "Uh, shopping." <laughs> He's like, that's refreshing. And then, <laughs> like, they're, um, he ends up like taking off. And then, like, they find out that there's like a baby, he just left the baby behind. 
so you can choose to like stay with the baby or to like leave the baby behind. If you leave the baby behind, I, I maybe there's a, another split here too. But I what I got was that you you're too late, and and the reverend like basically taunts you and says, "I got to them first and drives off with all the the girls from the second bunker in his van, and then it cuts back to like the the uh, uh, the the market or whatever where Johnny Knoxville's character was, and you just see like you know the baby just like wandering outside of the place <laughs> and you hear like a like a wolf or something howling or <laughs> it's just something fucked up basically let you know like oh this baby just like walked off into the wilderness you know right so yeah that was really funny and fucked up trying to think of like anything else that we should kind of mention or talk about that was like little funny bits or something mm, i don't know and I, think it's, we, I think we got everything there's lots of little jokes throughout it you know if you go through it it's fun I think the way I'd recommend it is if you get any of the kind of endings, just kind of stop there and then maybe come back to it sometime later. Cause when you try to like watch it go through it completely, like two times, you kind of burn out on it a little bit. So that, that's the one piece of advice I'd give to anybody doing don't, don't watch it the way we did. Like go, you know, take a few paths, get to, get to an end point, then stop and then come back to it sometime later, you know, and take a different path. But if you do like, I'll try to get all the paths done in like, you know, two in like one sitting or something, it's going to get kind of a little bit old by the time you finish it. Right. That was at least my experience. I don't know about you. Uh, My experience is it's funny. I mean, it's hilarious. I must have got multiple times. But yeah, it's not deep. You know, Uh, it's a different experience. I don't like comparing it to Bandersnatch because they're completely different things. And I think think they have different goals too. So I just want to say that overall I enjoyed it. Yeah, it was good. Um, It's not super deep. It's just, it's just not like, it's just not something that's super deep. It's just uh, something where you get to make a few goofy choices and have some fun with it. I kind of, I wish there were more branching paths, like at least like maybe at least two like fully different branching paths. That would have been kind of fun. Right. Um, But most of the choices kind of just led you to a few different jokes, basically. It would either give you a few different jokes and then move you on back to the same path that you'd be on anyways, or it would, you know, give you a few jokes and then go to a bad end, you know? But yeah, I mean, it was good. All the all the actors in it did a great job. It was funny. It gave you that Kimmy Kimmy Schmidt fix that uh, we haven't had in a while. So it was nice to kind of revisit that. I don't really know if they could ever really revisit again. I think they've kind of tread all the ground they could possibly do <laughs> with Kimmy Schmidt now, you know. But it, but it makes me eager to see what Tina Fey's next project is going to be. You know, it makes me go like, oh, we need another Tina Fey show on TV. You know, we had 30 Rock. We had Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. Great News was okay. That show was on. But we need something else, you know, from Tina Fey. And uh, another kind of just ridiculous over-the-top comedy, you know? That'd be nice. Yeah, that'd be Yeah. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. So all that we have left to do is to kind of talk about what's coming up in the week ahead. So uh, we're recording this on Monday, May 18th. Uh, Tomorrow, on Monday, May 19th, Stargirl debuts on the CW because we don't have enough Arrowverse shows, apparently. On Wednesday, May 20th, The 100 returns to the CW and At Home with Amy Sedaris comes to True TV. On Thursday, May 21st, Burden of Truth comes to the CW. The Split comes to Sundance. And Penance, the miniseries, comes to Sundance now. On Friday, May 22nd, Marvel's Future Avengers comes to Disney+, Plus. Homecoming to Amazon Prime, Control Z to Netflix, and Trailer Park Boys, the animated series to Netflix. On Sunday, May 24th, Batal comes to Netflix. On Monday, May 25th, Barkskins, the miniseries, comes to National Geographic. On Wednesday, May 27th, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. returns on ABC. I'm not sure if this is the second half of its season or if it's its the beginning of its final season. It's one of those. That show is coming to an end. I'm just not sure if these are its last episodes or if it's finishing up the season and then having more after. I don't know. Um, American Soul coming to BET and Love Life to HBO Max. Because that's uh, when HBO Max launches on May 27th. So apparently if you have HBO now, it's going to automatically switch over to HBO Max. And it's the same price and there's just a bunch more content. So that'll be nice. Hopefully it gives like 4K HDR support, which uh, HBO now does not. On Thursday, May 28th, Doro Hidoro comes to Netflix. This is kind of a long-awaited anime series. People have been waiting for this to come. Netflix does the kind of release all at once 
months model. And because of that, you know, there was no simulcast. So like it was, it had been airing in Japan and people were waiting for it to air here. Normally anime is really simulcast where you, uh, the episode basically comes out here, like within a few days of when it comes out in Japan, but Netflix likes to release a whole season at once. So that was put off for a little bit. On Friday, May 29th, Central Park comes to Apple Plus, Rami returns to Hulu, and Space Force comes to Netflix. Are you excited about this, Will? Uh, yeah, I'll watch it. I'm excited. It's Steve Carell, it's uh, Greg Daniels, and it's them mocking Space Force, which I think is going to be pretty funny. Yeah, that's cool. And then lastly, on Sunday, May 31st, Quiz, the miniseries, comes to AMC. So that's what's coming up in the next couple of weeks. Next week, we're going to be talking about Lost Season 6. We're going to be finishing it up Saturday. This coming up Saturday is the um, the 10-year anniversary of the series finale of Lost. And so that's when we're going to be caught up, and then we're going to record our podcast on Monday, um, that's, as that's usual. The 26, the 26 is the... Is the anniversary? You said the 26th? Uh, it's this Saturday. It's the 23rd. Uh, the 23rd is the actual 10 year anniversary. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, 10 year anniversary is on Saturday the 23rd. So that'll be when we watch the last episode of the series. And then we'll be talking about it on Monday. Uh, we'll record our podcast. Uh, and have that up to you sometime the next actually, week. Actually, I was, actually, I was facing out Friday is when I'll be watching the last episode of the series. Are you going to watch the uncut double one then? Yes. Okay. It, it, it makes no sense not to because, you know, that has like extra scenes and stuff in it. So. Yeah. Uh, I might do the same thing, but if I do, then I'll skip Friday and watch it on Saturday oh, just okay. to watch it on, to watch it on the 10 year anniversary. What? Well, cause, yeah, cause I, I'm, I'm big into that stuff. <laughs> I, I, I work, I work all day Saturday, so it's not convenient for me to. Yeah. Try yeah. It on the weekend, but yeah. To watch like an, like a two hour thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I understand. But yeah, so that's going to be the lost season six next week. Yeah. Then we, we don't really know what we, what we're going to do after that. We don't have anything else planned for the podcast. So we're going to have to figure out a topic of discussion soon for what we're going to do following that. Cause that's as far as we got planned ahead. We used to go week by week kind of all the time, like trying to figure out what we we're going to be talking about the next week. But we got kind of with the lost rewatch, we kind of had like a pretty tight schedule. We were trying to like fit in as much as we could, you know? So it's been a while since we've had kind of this, uh, like no, nothing really planned up ahead. So we'll have to figure out something to talk about. Yeah, that's it. You can follow me on Twitter. I'm at Tyson Gifford. You can follow Will. He is at Voxel Hero. You can check out our Facebook page and our YouTube channel as well as our site, thetoldscreen.com. You can subscribe to the podcast through any major podcast client like iTunes or Pocket Cast. And the entire backlog of our podcast is available on our YouTube channel. Thank you everybody for listening. Good night. Good night. If you would like to reach out to us and make a comment, send an email to contact at thetotalscreen.com. Stay tuned to the total screen for the very best in genre.